So, we recently got our hands on some of the deleted scenes from the director's cut of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which was rumored to have a runtime close to four hours. Which means that even though I only got my hands on five deleted scenes, that barely even scratches the surface. Now, before I begin my analysis, I just want to thank all of you for the tremendous support on the previous video. It was certainly my biggest undertaking, and I am more than happy to say that it paid off. Anyway, let's roll that intro. I will be breaking these scenes down in chronological order to find any connections between them. All deleted scenes were only about 80% complete according to the VFX team who worked on the movie. So these deleted scenes have a mix of animatics, unfinished CGI, and finished CGI. Anyway, let's begin with the most infamous deleted scene. This scene takes place in the same bus depot as all the trailer footage, and it is clear that some of this footage was recycled in the final cut, with some obvious dubbing changes. Now, the stars of this show are Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime and John DiMaggio as Transit, the first ever live-action bus former. This was intended to be the original opening of the movie, and so, in classic Transformers fashion, we start with a monologue by Optimus, like we did in the first Bayformers movie. Optimus also hints at the fact that the other four Autobots and himself are all that he is aware of that remain of the Autobot resistance. When Transit is parked by the human driver, we see the code 89P7. After some searching, I have come to the conclusion that this bus code is nothing but nonsense, because no major Brooklyn buses use this code at all. And here we see the original version of the recycled scene from the final cut when Optimus drives past the camera. In the original scene, you can see the human driver leaving the bus depot in his car and it is pouring. But in the theatrical cut, there is no rain and the humans are nowhere to be seen. We also learn why this scene takes place and why it was cut. Optimus was hunting Decepticons like Transit so that he could commandeer their ship to return to Cybertron, because we learn in this movie that Earth was only supposed to be a pit stop on their round trip. But this is also why this scene was cut, because having this scene as the opening and not the maximal scene means that the movie is setting up the final trajectory for the Autobots to return to Cybertron, rather than preventing the arrival of Unicron. One thing to note here is Transit's transformation, because the back half of his bus becomes the top half of the robot mode, and the front half becomes his legs, while portions of either side become his arms. All these details are not reflected in the robot mode though, because he actually has headlights on his chest and his tail lights are on his legs, when their positions should actually be flipped. And as I did many times before in my previous video, I would just like to say that the fight choreography in this film is so good and so much better than the Bayformer fights, if you know what I mean. Another thing to consider is the scale, because Transit is basically the same height as Optimus, which is not surprising for a bus former, but this means that he would tower over the other Autobots, because they are much, much shorter. Mirage is literally half as tall as Optimus. Another thing worth noting is the mix of unfinished CGI and animatics, because in this sequence, Transit's design radically changes from scene to scene, this is because one model is the animatic, and the other model is an unfinished CGI model. The main reason for why this scene was cut was because test audiences found it too dark to be rated E, 
But the truth is more disturbing because this scene was initially planned to end with Optimus tossing Transit's corpse into the Hudson River, where it would flow through a canal which led to a pipe of other Decepticon corpses. No names were given for the other possible Decepticon corpses though. The other reason was because it did not fit with the tone of the movie, because if the movie were to open with a fight with a Decepticon, it would set the story for the continuation of the war for Cybertron and the return to Cybertron, rather than stopping Unicron from reaching Earth. Also, because if the Decepticons near the location of the Autobots, they would not simply march into the planet, one by one, like a neat line of ants. That does not fit their character archetype, and this scene would only serve to muddle the previously established mythos of this universe. Following the theme of a darker plot, this scene is the alternate scene to the end of the museum fight. In the original, we just have Air Razor meet the Autobots after escaping the police for a second time. But here, we pick up with a zoom out on the lifeless corpse of Bumblebee, giving this scene some much needed weight. Another thing that was added was Elena's reaction to meeting Cybertronians. Other than that, the rest of the scene plays out exactly the same way it did in the theatrical cut. And personally, I think that this scene is actually a lot better than what we got, because it gives us much more insight into Elena's emotions, making her feel like a real three-dimensional character. This is the alternate scene to the search for the second half of the Transwarp key, which plays out basically the same as a theatrical cut, but here we get a little more of the Maximals, like how Cheetor saves Noah and Elena from the Minicon that Scourge sent after them. And here we get to soak in the true scale of the Maximals, because Cheetor absolutely towers over Noah and Elena. This deleted sequence also includes the mountaintop chase scene in Peru, and one main thing worth noting is how different RC looks in this. The differences are night and day. Although what is quite amusing is the fact that the other Although what is quite amusing is the fact that other than that one slow-mo scene, RC's model is the same as it is in the theatrical cut. Meanwhile, in the cave, Noah and Elena come across Rhinox, who once again looks absolutely gargantuan in comparison. Back on the mountaintops, there is another key difference. In the theatrical cut, Optimus just converts to bot mode and just engages Scourge head on, whereas in this alternate scene, he actually reveals a small blast to shoot the mountain above and collapse the road, because in this alternate scene, Scourge and the gang are way behind, and as Optimus turns that portion of the road to rubble, Scourge leaps at him, and like in the theatrical cut, they start tumbling down the mountain. In the cave, Noah and Elena successfully get away from Rhinox and are able to just move out of his horn's reach. Back to the mountain chase, another main difference here is that instead of instantly being taken out by Battle Trap, RC and Pablo put up a bit of a fight because RC is actually able to first change out her gun and try to take a shot before they are taken out. Other than that, the mountain portion of this scene plays out basically the same way in both versions. This deleted scene is almost the exact same as the scene from the theatrical cut, except for the exchange between Prime and Primal in the beginning and the end. That's it. And now for the final deleted scene. This scene is also connected to the alternate and darker story of the movie and was removed for the same reason as the opening, because Paramount wanted the ending to be hopeful, although personally I prefer this ending because it builds up suspense, because you need that if you're going to commit to a trilogy. One thing worth mentioning, the sound design here is almost perfect, because in space there is absolute silence. And this is why we should not have heard Unicron's voice at the end of the clip. That would have made this scene perfect, especially since Unicron's eyes lighting up was so ominous. But yeah, that is it. Those are all the deleted scenes in this movie. I really feel most of them, if not all, should have made the final cut. 
The only one that makes least sense is the opening scene, but that too could have been added after the opening of the theatrical cut, as the bridge to the earth rather than our introduction to Noah, which would still happen, but after this scene, so that we get more backstory in relation to the history of this universe, while still playing within the bounds of this story. But anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. I felt obligated to cover these deleted scenes as part of my Transformers Rise of the Beasts analysis series, although there is more to come. I have one more video planned for this series, then I might move on to either Transformers 1 or the new Transformers games or something else. If you would like to see something, just comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts, and as always, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.